Hi, young artists. It's me again, Miss P. So, you may or may not know that the month of February is Black History Month. So, we will be looking at all black artists for the month of February. Um, and this week, we are going to be looking at an artist that I just think is an unbelievable talent. Her name is Lois Mayu Jones. And um, we're going to make a piece that looks a little bit like this. This week, I already have it colored in, but um, you don't need to have it colored in this week because it might take you a while. We'll get to all of that. First, I want to tell you a little bit about her. Lois Mayu Jones was born in 1905. Again, a very long time ago. And she uh, grew up around Boston. And even early in her life, she was just very talented and clearly an artist. And she got a lot of support from her parents. Her father was actually the first black law school grad from Suffolk Law School. So she had successful parents and she spent a lot of her time in Martha's Vineyard where her parents bought a house. And there was an art scene going on there and she had the ability to make art during that time. She also went to an arts high school in um, 1919. All of these things really led up to her life, it pushed her in the direction of art. And unlike many others, she was able to pursue what she loved. So really it's a, it's a happy story. So she started making paintings in the 1930s and she went on and on and on until her death in 1998. She was 92. That is a good long life. So even though Lois Mayu Jones was supported by her parents, supported by the people around her, she, of course, endured racism and hatred and violence from fellow artists, from the, the community that she had the talent and the skill and she produced the work, um, but she wasn't welcomed by this community in, um, in these early times in American history. As a matter of fact, she had a white friend submit a painting to a DC gallery, to a DC contest. And she had her white friend submit this painting because she, as a black woman, could not enter this contest. And of course she won because she's a great painter. And she had the painting and the award mailed to her because she couldn't have anyone know that it was her, a black woman, making this art and winning this award. It's ridiculous. Anyway, that was in 1941. She ended up uh, producing work in New York. She was a part of um, the Harlem Renaissance, which was a time in New York that a lot of uh, black artists and poets and writers really thrived in a community of other black artists, such as um, Jacob Lawrence and Alma Thomas, who is another artist that uh, I'm going to make a video about. She, she eventually, you know, had these retrospectives of her artwork that came later. And even that, um, that academy where she uh, submitted the art, she, it was a Corcoran gallery. She, that, that, that uh, museum uh, had a retrospective for her and issued an apology 50 years later for um, not allowing her to enter that contest. Anyway, it's, it's a crazy story of how she overcame all these things and just succeeded because just this amazing talent. She went so far, even though people wrongly pushed her away. Anyway, she lived a long life and was celebrated in the time of her life, which is pretty cool to me. So let's look at this little, this little drawing I did. Lois Mayu Jones was very inspired by African masks, which is actually um, 
something that inspired a lot of artists and sort of abstract artists, most notably uh, Henri Matisse and Picasso. And when you look at these African masks, there's a lot of symmetry and geometry in these, in these masks um, that made them very hard to imitate. And she made a lot of paintings with faces and profiles they're just surrounded by color and so that's what I want us to do with this piece of art and like I said all we're gonna do this week is draw it out do the pencil drawing and then do it in sharpie and uh, do it in black sharpie because creating a mask and doing all these straight lines is difficult to get right but you guys are gonna do great with it okay so what I need from you for this project is I would like you to have a face on this paper. I would like you to first draw out these shapes in pencil and I would like you to outline your pencil shapes with Sharpie. All right, I think that's all. Let's get started. Okay guys, I'm starting by sketching out sort of like a lemon shape on my paper and I'm trying to get it right in the middle of my paper. I'm drawing lightly, I suggest you do the same. So once you erase these lines and cover them in Sharpie, you'll be able to fix it up. And you'll see that I do some erasing here. I would also suggest, I put this in the expectations, but take a look at some of her paintings. I base this on a specific painting, I feel like she gives you lots of sources for inspiration when you want to be inspired by her artwork and make something like Lois Mayu Jones's work. But right now I'm just drawing um, several of these shapes, one bigger than the next and one bigger than the next. And then I have a ruler so I can break up these shapes, which you'll see I do later with some straight lines. So I would also like you to use a ruler in this piece of art. Okay, now I'm starting with my Sharpie. I'm just going to do my Sharpie line so I can make a nice clear picture and you can see what's going on. I end up thickening these Sharpie lines a lot because I didn't really love how my shape looked. Like I said before, you know, it's, it's hard to draw straight lines and it's hard to get this right. And it makes you all the more appreciative of Lois uh, Mayu Jones, Jones's work because this isn't that easy to draw these perfect shapes and everything like that. So if you have to thicken up those Sharpie lines, feel free to do so. I think it was very helpful for making mine look a little bit more neat. It's going to look a lot neater in the end than it looks right now. Okay, now I'm taking my ruler and I'm going to break up these shapes so I can color them different colors. And we saw this in the lowest Mayu Jones that we're um, working from with this. I think I'm going to post the, that painting also with the assignment so you can look at it. Or you can look at a different painting to be inspired by her, like I said before. But breaking up this uh, drawing with lines, I think, is very helpful in just creating some diversity in the shapes we create. So now we have a bunch of different shapes to color and it's still a little messy but once I get rid of those pencil lines it's going to look even better. And um, because Lois Mayu Jones so often puts uh, patterns at the bottom, we're going to do a similar pattern to the one that she does in this very painting with some triangles and then I think we do some circular curves at the bottom.
by thickening up these lines, I feel like they're looking a lot nicer. I suggest when you're thickening up those straight lines to use the ruler because whenever I try to, you know, work on a straight line without a ruler, I end up regretting it because I can never get it as perfect as I want with the ruler. But, you know, that's the way it goes. Of course, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those pencil lines that I don't want. That's very important for making our piece nice and neat at the end. And now that I've done a lot of my lines already, I'm deciding which spots I want to leave totally black. So I'm taking some of those spaces, you could call them negative spaces, space where I think I'm just going to close that out with some black. And I do that with some of the sort of lemon shaped curves that I have above and with these half circles and triangles, as you can see right now. By creating these fields of black, uh, we're actually going to make this little drawing we did look a lot neater because there's less white space where you can see that variation in the black lines I created. So I would definitely suggest coloring parts of this in really well, nice and um, solid. And those solid fields of black will uh, make this look even more abstract and even neater. But now it's time for me to go back in with the pencil and do some eyes and a nose, I think, because again, the piece we're looking at has eyes and a nose. It doesn't really have a mouth, but it's got like long teardrops or eyelashes. And we're not doing exactly what I saw there. I'm just doing a little variation of it, doing some half circle eyelids and they're gonna have sort of long symmetrical eyelashes. They're each gonna have three eyelashes that are sort of larger than life long because this is a more abstract work, more larger, larger than life, a lot like the African masks that we saw earlier. And of course, just like before, I'm going over that with Sharpie now. And this is really coming together. I'm feeling pretty good about this at this point. I feel like it's similar to Lois Mayu Jones's work, but it's not too similar that it's boring. I'm also going to say, if you would like to make a couple sketches for this and decide which one you like best, if you just move with it free flowing and you take some shapes and you make a face and you make it nice and clean, it's gonna look really good. So look for shapes that Lois Mayu Jones used. Um, and if you take those shapes and those elements and those colors and combine them, you'll make something really beautiful. But we're getting towards the end, so I'm going to say uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you for the next part. Bye, guys.